The word of the Lord this morning is, the topic is, I don't see it yet, but God said it's coming. The bones will form and rain will come. You ought to just say that to your neighbor. I don't see it yet, but God said it's coming. The bones will form. Ah, come on with me. The bones will form. And rain will come. I don't see it yet. But God said it's coming. The bones will form. And rain will come. My Jesus, my Jesus. One of the things my pastor told me, she's like, Troy, pace yourself. I'm trying. Where's Deacon James? He said that um, it's almost a, a young man in, in, in its name, right? So... I'm very young. I'm going to run up and down these, <laughs> these stairs today. So we explore a powerful message of hope and faith in the face of seemingly impossible circumstances. Our focus lies in the scriptures of 1 Kings 18 and Ezekiel 37, revealing a profound in truth. Though we may not see it yet, God said it's coming. So let's open our hearts and our minds to receive his word. These are two seemingly two different experiences. But God brought them together to show faithfulness. Come on, tell your neighbor, I don't see it yet. Open your mouth, open your mouth. I don't see it yet. But God said it's coming. The bones will form and rain will come. In Ezekiel's vision, he finds himself in a valley filled with dry bones, representing the desolation and hopelessness of the people in Israel in exile. The situation seemed impossible as the bones were lifeless, disconnected, and devoid of any future. Yet in the midst of bleakness, God asked Ezekiel a profound question. He said, mortal, can these bones live? And God's inquiry challenges us to confront our own circumstances and invites us to trust in the power to bring life where there seems to be none. God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones Declaring his promise of restoration and renewal. Ezekiel obediently speaks the words of God as he does. An extraordinary transformation takes place. The bones come together. Sinews and flesh cover them. And breath enters their bodies. Signifying the revitalization of God's people. This remarkable transformation of dry bones teaches us an essential lesson. We must speak God's promises over our lifeless situation. Our words have power. I'm going to say that again. Our words have power. What you speak in every situation, you are speaking it over your own life. God told Ezekiel to prophesy to these bones. What does that mean? It means when God gives you a command and he tells you to do something, he already knows the outcome. And some of us, we don't speak life in our situations. We speak deem and doom and gloom over our situations. But God said to speak life over our situations. Somebody say life. Life. Speak life over our situation. And as you continue to speak life over your situation, just like he told Ezekiel, I'm telling you today, prophesy to your situation. It looks dark. It looks gloomy. 
It looks like it will never change. But just like it did for Ezekiel, God is a God of promises. And his promises are yea and amen. And he's a God that cannot lie. Somebody say amen. Check on your neighbor. Make sure they're still up. Even if we don't see signs of any change, we must still continue to prophesy to God's promises over our lives, believing that his word will not return void. Speak life over every situation. Tell your neighbor, I speak life over you. Speak to your neighbor. Y'all wake up, I speak life over you. Live, 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 live. Live. In the vision, Ezekiel witnesses the bones come into life. But, Brother Foy, it doesn't happen instantaneously. Sometimes, when we're trusting God for something, we want it like microwave, pop in, pop out, and it's done. But that's not how God works all the time. It takes time for the bones to come together. For the sinews and the flesh to form and for breath to enter their bodies. It's the same thing in our lives. The fulfillment of God's promises, it often requires patience and trusting in his timing. We must remember that God's ways are higher than ours. And his timing is intricately woven into his plans for our lives. God's timing is perfect. I said, God, timing is perfect. It's not when we want it. It's not when we want it, but it's according to his will. And sometimes we're waiting on something from the Lord. I say, like, God, when, when is this going to happen to me? Uh, this is another new year that we're going into. Auntie Melvin, there's some things that I put before God for years. And every year, I'm like, God... Well, this is another year. You forget me? What happened to me? I'm still waiting. And sometimes while you're waiting, you see everybody else getting what you've been praying for. Has that ever happened to you? And you're wondering, God, when it's my turn. But I hear the Lord saying, They that wait up on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings with easels. They shall run and not what? They shall walk and not. Come on, somebody say wait. Somebody say wait. Wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. But waiting sometimes is hard. But I want you to trust in the timing of God because His will and His plans for you are perfect. Tell your neighbor, wait, 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 wait. The message of Ezekiel 37 reminds us that faith requires us to believe in the unseen. There may be moments when we don't see any evidence of change or breakthrough. How many of you that happens to? You're praying, but you don't see anything happening. I'm believing God for healing, but you're still in the same pain. But don't you dare give up because that's the time the enemy thinks he has you. But what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for your good. So your healing is going to be according to God's timing. So not because it doesn't happen, you stop praying. That's how they get us. That's how the enemy gets us. The minute we don't see it happening on our timing, we start to doubt. But Ezekiel didn't have any doubt. He started to speak to these bones and prophesy as God commanded him. Our present circumstances do not define the faithfulness of God. Rather, his promises define our hope, regardless of what we see or we don't see. As we begin to take a moment to reflect on our own lives, how many times have we faced situations that they looked bleak? Think about it. In 2023, how many circumstances you've gone through? How many battles you've had? Huh? How many situations you've been through that seem so hopeless? Huh? How many battles you've been fighting? Huh? 
How many times you checked your account and the balance is the mass not massing? You're like, God, how am I paying these bills? What is money in this account? But the faithfulness of God is ever present and ever through and ever true. He makes a way out of nowhere. 